Hello everyone. Today, I'm very happy to share with you my newest addition to my collection of Barbie Fashionista dolls. These are the 65th anniversary dolls and I have all six of them. I purchased them from Amazon.com here in the US and I'm in the state of New Mexico. They were sold for $10.99 and I received five before Christmas and I ordered six but the last one did not arrive until about a month later and the last one I was charged with the shipping because it was charged to my credit card as it was shipped so it had a solo shipping so the ten dollars and 99 cents if it is spread through six dolls with the addition of a dollar 33 cents in shipping and taxes and that would come up to twelve dollars and 32 cents each if you order them today they may not be all available at once i'm sure that the entire collection will be available soon. Let's begin with Barbie number 213. Here's Barbie 213. She looks really beautiful in person. Although her eyes and facial screening, they are pixelated, they look beautiful. They don't have the shiny surface that one would expect. At least my doll here doesn't have that shiny surface. A little bit maybe depending on the angle of the lighting, but she is very beautiful in person. And I'm shooting the video through the transparent package. And here you can see the tube top. There are straps that are made of transparent elastic and those should be removed and also here you can see the ruffled pink skirt and also the inspiration which is the 1959 ponytail Barbie in her iconic black and white bathing suit. Here's a closer look at that small illustration of the 1959 Barbie and it also says here Barbie 65 inspiring stories shaping the future and there is an illustration at the front of the Barbie that is inside it doesn't look like her but it's a beautiful illustration the side view of Barbie's box shows one bent right arm because she is a model muse in body positioning. The legs, however, are straight. This is one straight side of the box that shows the illustration of the collection of Barbie fashionistas from 2023 through 2024. The last six girl dolls are what comprise of the 65th anniversary Barbie Fashionistas collection. The back of the box contains all types of information, but I'm specifically looking for the copyright date of the dolls. And here we could see that it is copyrighted at 2023 and all the boxes have the same information and here also it says made in Indonesia and all of the dolls are made in Indonesia and this particular one has this barcode so if you're looking for the specific doll look for the barcode it also has Mattel's slogan empowering the next generation through play to successfully remove the doll from the box, you need to loosen up or unhinge the bottom tabs as well as the side tabs of the back of the box. 
and this will loosen up the box in itself. There are no adhesive tapes that holds the sides together. Free up the side of the box that contains the number of the doll that is inside the box. This will free up the side and will allow you to open and slide the doll out. And here's Barbie 213 and she is out of the box. She looks more beautiful out of the box than inside the box without the reflection from the plastic that covers the front of the box. There are three points that ties her to the backing board. One at the head, another is at the waist, and the third one is at her ankles. Now at the back of the board, you can't see any nylon ties in there. So you'll need to make your cut at the front and I would suggest the side of the box and avoid as much possible cutting the hair of the doll. You'll need to carefully remove the elastic bands that ties her hair at the back. She's got loose ends in here, so be very careful. These dolls can't stand alone, so you'll need to get a doll stand to hold them up. Barbie has blue sunglasses. It matches her eyes, and she has a beautiful face. Her lipstick matches her pink skirt as well. She has no earrings, so no earring holes for Barbie. And her tube top fits very well, and it does echo the 1959 ponytail Barbie. Her skirt has ruffles as part of a detail and the only issue I have is that the ruffles of the skirt is not finished but it's okay since it will not fray. And here you can also see her shoes and the shoes fits very well for her. It is a sandal style and it has high heels and I like that on this ensemble and she's got a slit at the back of the shoes that allows it to come in and out easily. Barbie's long nylon blonde hair falls at the back just slightly above the waist in layers. And also you can see here that Barbie's tube top doesn't have any closure, it just slides in and out. And that is also the same situation with her skirt. It's a pull-on skirt, so there are no closures. I took the clothes off Barbie so we can take a closer look. And here you can see the skirt and the front shows some stitching. And here you have an elastic that is attached to the waistband. This will stabilize that area and also adjust the waistline. Same story here with the tube top. There's actually two areas here, the top and the bottom. It's about a quarter of an inch of elastic and that will help stabilize the pieces of the garment. It is a very, very nice touch and definitely a must in terms of stabilizing the garment. And at the front of the garment, it looks just fine. Just a few stray threads there that needs to be cut and here's the back. It doesn't have any closing here at the back. Let's take a closer look at her skirt. Unlike the top that's made out of knitted cotton, this one is made of knitted polyester. And this one is a medium weight material rather than a lightweight one as the tube top. Now this one has the same structure, no closure at the top and held only by elastic. What bothers me about this skirt, although it hangs really well, was that the ruffle is not finished, but it is stitched to the skirt. It is not glued on, and I like this feature of the skirt. I will probably finish the ruffle myself, but since it is of an unfrayed material or anti-frayed material, 
it, it's okay. It is, after all, a play doll. But this particular feature of the skirt could probably need more finishing at the edges of the ruffle to make it a bit more presentable. But the inside is the same. It is not finished. But again, this one is not fraying, so it is okay. I'd like to point out that her clothes does not have any labels that indicate that these pieces belong to Barbie. Barbie Fashionista has the original body structure and stands about 12 inches with her heels. She is a lady type fashion doll and she has a fully busted figure. Her arms are in a model pose position but her legs are straight. Barbie Fashionista number 213 has the Millie face mold. She has nylon rooted hair and it is fully rooted. So even if you take her ponytail down, she can be restyled so easily because she doesn't have any gaps or patches in between. She has a soft plastic head and the rest are of hard plastic materials. She has the standard five points of articulation, one at the head, two at the arms, two at the legs, and she has very nicely formed hands and she's got that one bent elbow as well. She's got one piece torso. Her legs only moves from forward and backward. Although it looks like it's socketed, it can't move in all directions. She has beautifully formed legs, but it does not have any articulation. And her feet are not as well sculpted in terms of the toes, but she does have high heeled feet. The back of her head is stamped 2015 Mattel. Her back is also marked Genuine Barbie 2015 Mattel, made in Indonesia. Her underwear is also stamped at the back and her legs are well formed but there is a seam there that runs all the way to her foot. Overall, Barbie Fashionista number 213 is a beautiful doll and will be an excellent addition to your collection of Barbie Fashionistas in 2024. Please proceed to part two of this series to view Barbie Fashionista number 214. I prefer to be detailed in my presentation, so the parts tend to be long, so I've decided to break up the series and focus solely on one doll per presentation. Thank you for your patience and have a great day.